<clears throat> Jeffrey, there you are with a Wesson Lawn Tennis Club t-shirt, rocking it out. Um, Pontiac, Michigan. Yeah. What's going on over there today? Anything, uh, anything uh, Well, we, had, we got, uh, we had, uh, actually the last couple weeks, uh, the weather's been spectacular. There's been some great grass court tennis. It's been really fun. We had four events over the weekend. Um, from uh, a big a big cocktail party Friday night uh, with live music. We had uh, Saturday uh, open play, and then Saturday evening we had a little croquet out on one of the back courts. We set up the croquet and, and a little wine and wickets. Wine and, and wickets, there you wine go. Wine and wickets, wow. baby. And, at and the then, Wesson. Uh, wine and wickets at the, at the Wesson. Wesson. At the Wesson. And <sighs> then... Uh, and then after Wine and Wickets, we had a, a beautiful uh, salmon dinner served on cedar plank, you know, toasted cedar plank. So pardon, we had that out on the deck. Pardon me. It's kind of casual. Casual. Excuse you know. me. Wow. Um, and then uh, Sunday morning, uh, we did um, we did breakfast at Wimbledon. And, uh, you know, everybody gathered around the bar here in front of the big flat screen. And we all moaned and groaned. And up and down and sideways and everything. Yeah. But it was a great, uh, it was a great morning. Plus, you know, everybody, everybody at some point got up and went out and played a set or two and came back and the match was still going. So, um, amazing. And then came so, back for yeah, lunch it, and, and the match was still going. That's right. Um, so yeah, it's been great. And then last night though, uh, last night we had a pretty heavy thunderstorm come through, dropped a lot of rain. So no uh, no grass court this you know today the courts are uh, going to be a little little soft today um, and it looks like uh, we're going to get a little bit more this afternoon but um, it's going to heat up by the weekend so so Friday we may not be on the grass either just because it's so hot um, that tends to that's um, interesting stress because the, um, the, the 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 grass courts in the desert it's not a problem so the heat's not a problem. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why it would be. Is it is it chemicals? A, you think? I mean, do they do they put um, different chemicals on that might be a problem if it gets too I'm hot? Not, or? I'm not sure. Um, you know, it could be the type of grass. Are you on rye grass or what? Green. Green, green grass. Yes. <laughs> it's green. Um, not sure. Not sure, but I, I I know it does here anyway. Okay. And I'm not sure whether it's the humidity factor or what the what happens to it, but I know. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty strong on certain, you know, uh, weather variables yeah. and, uh, and keeping the grass as fresh as possible and healthy as possible. Um, so Friday looks, it could be, it could be a no go just because of the heat factor and humidity factor. So. Uh, well, I'm here in Denver, Colorado, got here yesterday. Uh, mine, I took the California Zephyr, the overnight train from San Francisco Bay area. Spectacular, spectacular viewing, man. You got the whole Sierras. I bet. You know, you wake up in the Wasatch the next morning, uh, and then you get the full day of the Rockies, which is just, it's ridiculous. It's so just so how's, uh, how's sleeping on the train? I mean, is, is it you're rumbling or is it? Yeah, you're uh, rumbling like... and tumbling and stumbling. And, and it's, uh, you know, we, we, we splurred. So we had, we had the sleeping, you know, room, car. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's, and it's got, it's got a small, Two person bed down below. There is a there is an upper bunk up above, which one of you can get into, but it's a little claustrophobic. And so uh, <laughs> so both of us kind of like said, nah, I don't think so. Um, yeah. so didn't want the coffin feel. Yeah, I didn't want the coffin <laughs> feel. And plus they have they have the uh, the straps that you can put up so that if, you know if the train oh. stops real sudden you don't roll off right. and um, so the sleeping is off and on. It's not perfect, but you know you're not right. there to. It's so anyway, it was fine. Right. Um, so uh, anyway, we're here for two days: Giants, Rockies. Uh, uh, last night, Giants, Rockies, and then today we're going to uh, the Giants, Rockies game here today in Denver. So, and we're I'm here at my friend's apartment. They've got a beautiful apartment overlooking the entire Rocky Mountain Range. You can look south to Pikes Peak down in Colorado Springs. Still wow. snow there. You can, I mean, it's just spectacular. And, you know, from here, from their apartment, you can walk to Coors Field. You can walk to the Pepsi Center, which is um, for the basketball and the ice hockey. And then I'm looking at right over here towards, you know, probably a 10-minute walk to where the, uh, the Broncos play football. So if you're a young buck and you're smart and you're making a, a little bit of money and you're single, whew, 
it could be uh, it could be a possibility. Um, <laughs> it could be a possibility. Anyway, uh, so that's it. Um, what's else? Well, I don't know. So, what's on your mind there, Jeffrey? Anything you got going on today? Uh, nothing. I got nothing. Nada. I mean, I had a thought. I had a thought the other day. You know, yesterday, uh, yeah. and then it kind of fleeted. So it may come circle back. It was, you know. So I don't know. I, I forget what it was. There you go. Senior moment. So what do you got? What do you got? You got anything? Well, just to just to back up the senior moment, there will come a there will come a time when you'll go, oh, I've had this great thought. Nah, I won't forget it. Yes, you will. So that's when I pick up my phone and I go with the audio recorder and make a call. Oh, there you go. Good. It it works every time. You know what? Um, Yeah, you know, I've started this new Facebook group, this new Web Tennis Facebook group. And and it's a closed group. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's closed. It's free. It's closed just because I want to make sure we're not getting any any spammers in there. Uh, but one of the things I ask is I ask three questions um, when, when, when someone requests to be uh, a member. And, uh, you know, the first question I ask, well, what's the number one area of your game that you, that you really want to work on? And the most common thing so far has been consistency. I want to be, a, I want to be more of a consistent shot maker. And, and I remember working with, with Mr. Stowe back in the day and and you know the Stowe method is is you hit the ball pretty heavy the groundies are pretty heavy and court positioning you're pretty aggressive with not only hitting heavy groundies but you're robbing that opponent of time so you're right. aggressive with your baseline position and then you're trying to play you know anything that's relatively short as a heavy approach <clears throat> and and so when I was working with him I could do all the stuff, but I, I wasn't consistent. You know, right. it was just I was spraying balls all over the five one zero area code. You know, I mean, at least I go back to BTC and try to <laughs> work on the stuff. So I just remember, you know, one day just going to him. I said, you know, I just I, I love all your stuff, Mr. Stowe, but I can't seem to hit two or three in a row. And right. I said, what should I be thinking about? And, uh, you know, he, he kind of gave me, I thought, the keys to the kingdom when he, when he said, it's really all about the very first thing that we worked on with day one. The first day I went up there to see him, I don't think I, you know, it was a three-hour session with Kinger and Steve Stefanke and John Hubble, is that, is that first hour I didn't hit a tennis ball. All he had me do was turn... You know, he, he didn't use the thing unit turn. That sort of became a, right. sort of a, a buzzword later. But turned into kind of a set. But it was more about the movement in terms of creating movement in an efficient way so that you time after time after time, no matter whether it's a ground stroke, forehand, backhand, an approach shot, forehand, backhand, a volley, whatever it was, that spatially you had right. the same ideal perfect distance away from the path of that incoming ball. And he said, if you'll do that, if you'll put your focus on that and not on, hey, well, I'm going to hit the ball over there, I'm going to hit the ball big or do this or that, all the technique stuff, Brent, you've already spent enough time doing that. Just work on getting consistent with spacing. And, And once I started doing that, it was interesting because I just sort of everything got a lot more simple. Everything got a lot more clear. There was clarity in terms of I think a lot of players think first they see a ball coming over the forehand and they go, I'm going to hit this ball there or I'm going to hit the ball over there. And even if it's a soft incoming ball where you ought to be able to do that 99 and a half times out of 100, too often they would forget spacing and they most of the time would crowd the ball. Very few of the right. times they were, they, were, they were not close enough. It was, it was crowding the ball. Um, and so I think in, in, in response to that question that I get frequently, how do I become more of a consistent shot maker? It's not about becoming a consistent shot maker. It's about becoming more consistent with spacing. And, right. And, and if you totally. do then, then, then the technique gets a chance to be super simple. If your spacing is, in, is inconsistent, then you have to, 
you kind of have to, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking well, it's for? A, it's, you, it's all compensation at that point. It it's is. It's total compensation. That you're, right. You're using, Improvise you're using is the word I'm looking for. You're, yeah, you're using a different swing every time you strike the ball. And I don't remember Mr. Stowe saying, now in this situation when you, when you space incorrectly over here, use this swing. Uh, if you if if you space this way incorrectly, and there's a million and one different ways that we can space incorrectly, right? Right. There's right. not a million and one different forehands. No. No. Not, not. I mean, not if we're not if we're actually trying to be efficient and have the body work the way it's designed to work kinetically, and and have all those wonderful all those other wonderful buzzwords happen. Um, it all comes down to you know the term I like to use is framework. That that framework when you turn. That is what has to become consistent. So, so you can call it a unit turn, but I, I think, I think that leaves some verbally. I think it leaves a little bit to the imagination, which is why I kind of, I tend to use different words to help, so I can really get a description down out of that one word or two words right, that the right. person can really understand. And so I like to use the term framework because it just the framework conjures up a picture. Um, and so that is what has to be consistent to get what you're talking about, the consistent spacing. I, yeah. I can't be consistent spacing if when I turn my rackets close to me on one, far away on another, up on this one, down on this one. That's not, I can't have consistent spacing that way because your brain is working with that framework to figure out the spacing and the ball. Right, right. I mean, there's, there's stuff going on, right? So for me, in my journey, um, you know, I worked with uh, Giuseppe Camarado at Silverado in Napa, who was uh, who took over for Tom Stowe there at Silverado. Um, so he was definitely, um, you know, no, knows, uh, you know, the, the Stowe methodology and understands the turn. At that time, technically, I would have put him up against anybody in the world in terms of being a great uh, tennis technician, understanding, watching somebody hit a ball and really being able to get in there and and do surgery and clean things up and get, really get rid of the, the wasted movements and get down to the brass tack. So with me being very athletic and creative, um, you know, we, he just battled with me all the time about, can you just turn? Can, can you just, can you just do this? And so, you know, in the, in that part of the, that part of my development, I had to really take away, I had to put my, creative thought process off to the side, which is very difficult to do, but I had to become, you know, whatever you want to call it, just a, just a boring ball striker, you know, cause there was, it, it didn't, it didn't excite me. But once I started to see, Oh, I can actually hit four balls in a row in the court. The game started to become a little more fun, you know? So, um, so that part of it, you know, you really have to pare away what's not needed here in, in the stroke process. And, but going back to what you originally said, if we can't have consistent spacing, there is no having a consistent forehand, backhand volleys or whatever it might be. It's, it, it, it can't work. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, so what I would suggest anyone who is, wants to be a more consistent shot maker is look, go out there and have someone under literally underhand feed you. Let's, let's take the forehand groundy, for example, underhand feed you some balls to your forehand and so that you can be aware of when you make contact with one of them, you go, oh, that's the one I want to be consistent with. And what you're going to discover is, well, or what you should be thinking about when you hit that one is, all right, let's see if we can back it up a little bit. And how far away, literally, how far away was I from the ball? And that distance away from the ball when you made contact is different for you than for me than for Jeff. And then how far in front, or maybe not how far in front, right. did you make contact? So once you kind of have a reference of, well, here's my unique ideal point of contact on my forehand rally ball, all you have to do, once you know that, all you have to do, this is going to sound easier than, than it is, but you, all you have to do is just recreate that spacing so you get an opportunity to be able to make contact with your racket at that distance away from the path right. of the incoming ball. And, and I think that, I think if you don't take it from that, <coughs> excuse me, from that um, <coughs> learning process, which is don't go out there and get in the ball machine and crank up the ball machine <coughs> as if you're in a match. 
Don't get don't mm-hmm. get match ball speed going to try to become more consistent. You know, get that little ball machine that that thing. I remember they would just they just kind of spit the little thing out maybe five right. feet away from you, right? Boop, mm-hmm. Right. Right. And so there is a little a little consideration for the for your incoming ball. You could try to do it by by hand feeding, but I think right. that it's I think you you need to have some incoming ball in terms of timing so there's some timing right yeah it's, it's, it's definitely easier if the ball's passing through the strike zone a little right. bit right then then a dead then a dead drop feed so um, get some I, I think that i think that little thing there's no I, I mean we have no connection with it but it's called um what's it called i think one of them's called i think they're all the same machine just different brands on them so one of them might be called little mother or something and it, it holds a little spiral it holds 28 balls that's right and it just spits it up, yeah. you know, and um, I don't think you can change the how fast it feeds the next ball because whenever I've seen them demonstrate it, it's always a little, you know, it seems like it's slow. Right. But um, you can get them uh, with a rechargeable battery or 4D batteries. And the thing's a small little tower, 28 balls. You pop it out there on the court and just. You, the, the the part here that I think, you know, the blind spot for a lot of players is the, is once you start to have consistent spacing, now you actually have the opportunity to develop consistent feel because now I'm operating the same, the same way each time, and that's where feel is built. Oh, I, I can feel it now. I understand how my body is supposed to, um, you know, uncoil into the ball. I understand that now. I can start to feel the way the, the ball feels off the strings, and I'm actually getting control of the ball on the strings. I can actually feel what spin I'm imparting um, onto the ball. You know, it's always fascinating to me. You know, when I see balls hit, and there was, there was, in fact, it was probably backspin on the ball. And the person across the net is saying, "Man, you really put some great topspin on that ball there. It really jumped when it hit." You know, and so the, the, this like separation of really understanding visually what you're looking at and, and you know, physics. <laughs> like, yeah. Racket's going like this, you know, that's back spin. Racket's doing this. Or, or it was a total miss hit. Man, that was a great shot, Bob. Okay. <laughs> you know, and it bounced funny. Um, well, look. So anyway, I, I mean, that's just, it's not, a, it's not a rant. It's just an understanding that you, you've got to take the time as a student to – to go be slow enough to un- to actually see and understand and feel what those spins feel like off the racket face. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you need to slow things down to be yeah, able to. Yeah. So do- so if you're going to be on the court, someone's under underhanding, uh, underhand feeding you balls or whatever it is, if where you're starting to find out here's here's my ideal spacing, here's my ideal contact point. Fine, you're on the court. You now have a reference point. When you go home. What's to say that you can't rehearse that swing, even though there's no tennis ball involved? But at least now you you have a reference point of where you want to make contact. Well, to me, the more you rehearse that at home, the more you rehearse that off the court, the more you sit back for 30 seconds, close your eyes, and visualize that that ideal spot, the faster you're going to become a consistent right. shot maker. So. Yep. Good. I would I would add this too. If you can do it when you do it at home too, if you can do it in front of a full length mirror or in front of a sliding glass door, which will give you the the full length mirror effect, and and look at yourself and does it look does it look um, balanced? Does it look uh, there's a symmetry to it? Um, do you look comfortable or do you look hunched over? Or do you look like you're kind of off to one side? Because because listen, I've seen it all. You've seen it all. And, and when you, you know, when you make that turn, do you, do you know that your racket face is actually fanned open? Maybe not. Yeah. So like, you know, close your eyes in front of the window or in front of the mirror, close your eyes, put yourself in a ready position and then open your eyes. Does it look good? Does it look comfortable or do you look cramped up? Are your hands tucked into your waist? Are you, and start to look at that thing and then do it again, close your eyes and do it again. And then, and then now close your eyes. Once you find it, like maybe define your ready position a little better. Now close your eyes and make your turn. Then open them. Look at it. Does it does it look? Does it look like? Hey, you know what? That if I did that every time, I would probably look like I had a nice forehand. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But I, I think I think there's a lot, you know, where the 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 feels that the that you're trying to interpret are 
are misguided by the picture. The picture in your head and what's actually happening are just diametrically opposed, but you're associating the feel with this picture and they don't line up and you got to untie that knot. All right. All right. Good, good. All right, Jeff, good stuff, man. Thank you. Um, guys, listen, I don't think I mentioned at the beginning of today's episode. Uh, you got a what? stranger walking in the background. Oh, I do. <laughs> oh, there's Mr. Go. Douglas right back there. Good, <laughs> good. Um, uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, Jeff and I are still offering a complimentary 10 minute private three way coaching call on the phone. We don't record it, so uh, we're not going to blast it all over the internet. Uh, but what we do want to hear from you is, is what's the number one thing in your game right now that's maybe holding you back from getting the result that you want. The way to get on that call, go over to goldballhunting.com, drop in a first name and email address, click the button, and you'll get immediate access to our online calendar scheduler where you can cherry pick a date and time that works best for you. The other way is any email, if you're already on our email list, any email you get from us, there is a link somewhere. Jeff, I don't recall exactly where, but somewhere in that email list, it will somewhere. take you over to yeah. that to that calendar, and yeah. uh, and let's get you signed up. Jeff, what do we want to find folks to do right now? Like us, share us, please subscribe, let us know what you think down below. Outstanding, guys. Get out there today, wherever you are. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeff will do this again tomorrow. Can't wait.